episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about how to parent and reparent the triple Scorpio child. Yes, one of you, a viewers, asked for this video specifically on the triple Scorpio. So we're going to talk about what that is and uh, what that means for the energy of the chart and also how to best interact with your child if your child has those placements. And if you're the adult uh, and parent who has the triple Scorpio placements, how to reparent yourself, how you can start to work on the reparenting process. First, we're going to go over kind of on a high level, the general traits regarding Scorpio energy. Now I have a bunch of videos, an entire playlist on how to parent Scorpio kids, where I go over this information in great detail. So we're gonna hit the high points here. So Scorpio is fixed water, okay? It is a very emotional sign. It is a sign that makes decisions and approaches life based on its emotions, its intuition, more than logic and rationality, right? I always compare it to air signs. If air signs kind of make decisions based on, they come from a place of logic and detachment, rationality, uh, the mind, and if they approach life that way, water signs are very different. They approach life from a place of feeling, they intuit things, uh, they, they make decisions based on emotions. That's the first thing to understand. So the fixed modality means that Scorpio people are more concerned with making things uh, stay the same, so status quo, uh, changing things so they were as they were before, stability, right? So it's as compared to the cardinal modality, which is more intent on moving forward on change, generally more comfortable with change. It's harder for Scorpio energy to accept change based on the fixed modality of the sign. So the most important thing I tell people to understand about Scorpio energy, it is a sign that needs to feel. The crux of the Scorpio experience is that Scorpio has to feel. Scorpio would rather feel bad and feel negative emotions than feel nothing. That is preferable to feeling nothing. So when this energy presents in kids, sometimes it presents as this very almost over the top uh, emotional state, right? Because kids have their impulse control is just not as developed yet, right? Their emotional expression and how to articulate things is just not as developed yet as it is for adults. So this trait plays out more intensely when the child has a strong Scorpio energy in their chart because it is such an emotional energy. It is an energy that needs to feel the entire range of kind of human experience. Scorpio energy also likes to get to the bottom of things. When they decide that somebody is worth their time and is an individual they want to be loyal to and have a relationship with, they want to know everything about the other individual. They want to get to the bottom of everything, okay? They like, they like to probe and with the parent, Sometimes uh, older kids will like to snoop on the parents' texts and things like that. And it does not usually come from a bad place, right? It comes from this place of wanting to understand about the parent, of wanting to know things about the parent, of probing. It's a very, it's a sign that, that likes to probe, that likes to investigate. One of the reasons that Scorpio people make very good uh, investigators, very good detectives, things like this. Also very good doctors and very good psychologists and psychiatrists because they like to probe the depths of things. Scorpio kids tend to bond very closely with parents, right? They need a very close attachment with parents, even more so than, than other kids. So we've talked about on this channel before this tendency of water energy to sometimes blur the boundaries between uh, the individuals in the relationship. Okay, so this is very much at play with Scorpio energy. So Scorpio people have this tendency, this drive to kind of merge with the other individual. Okay, so if you're parenting a child with a lot of Scorpio energy, something to understand, they need close attachment with the parents. That's just what the kid needs. It's not wrong or, diff or you know weird or anything like that. That's what the kid needs to bond with the parent. So teaching healthy boundaries is also very important when you're raising a Scorpio child. I go over that in detail in my videos on parenting Scorpio sun and moon kids. So this video is specifically on the triple Scorpio. What does that mean? Well, when somebody says they're a triple Scorpio or a triple uh, you know, Taurus or God forbid, a triple Aries, 
some that somebody actually I know personally is a triple Aries. It's very interesting. So anyway, that means that the person's big three, so to speak, sun, moon, and rising sign are all in the sign of Scorpio in this case. Okay. So sun, moon, and rising sign are kind of the most significant elements of the birth chart. When you start to study astrology, you, you look at that to kind of start, start to get the tone of the chart. Okay. So we're going to explain a little bit what those elements represent to the chart holder and then kind of what it means when the chart holder has those elements, all three of them in the sign of Scorpio. Okay, so the sun, obviously, it's what gives you life. It's kind of your life force. How you approach the world, the sun also illuminates everything else in your birth chart. It's hard to look at every, all the other elements in your birth chart, all the other planets, without taking into consideration the sun because it illuminates all the other elements of your chart. It's going to give a flavor to all the other elements of your chart. It can represent how you pursue your own goals, both, you know, individually in relationships, things like that. Although there are other things in the chart that inform how you behave in relationships. How, so how you pursue your goals, how you approach life, how you approach the world, almost the filter through which you see the world. So obviously very important, right? So the moon in your chart represents your emotional nature. Anything that kind of subconsciously touches on your emotions, is uh, kind of filtered through the moon. How you subconsciously respond to anything that touches on your emotions. That's the moon sign will inform that. It will inform what you need to kind of recharge your energy. It will inform how you show up in relationships. It will inform kind of uh, what your childhood was like to an extent too. So basically anything that touches on your emotions, how you show up in your home life, how you show up in relationships, things like this. So we say that the moon sign in that respect rules your emotional life. Now the rising sign is the energy that you automatically project to the outside world. It can be called your personality. So if you read and follow Dr. Joe Dispenza, he talks about your personality affects your personal reality, right? So the personality sometimes is what we automatically, you know, um, project to the outside world. It does not completely inform who we are at a soul level, okay? It is a part of us, but it does not completely inform who we are at a soul level, what we need to be personally fulfilled at a soul level. But it is a part of our nature, okay? So so think of it that way. It's, it's the energy you're, so you're automatically projecting to the outside world. It has to do with your personality. If you watched my interview with astrologer, Eugenia Croc a while ago, which is on this channel, she's an expert in the rising sign, has done many studies on the rising sign, has done many surveys. She is a psychotherapist as well as an astrologer. And she puts it this way, the rising sign kind of sets the tone for your life, kind of what themes are going to be important in your life. And she posits that people who have the same rising sign in some ways have a similar tone to their life, okay? And you can find out more by, you know, looking at her website and going to her group. She has a bunch of rising sign groups specifically based on your rising signs. Very interesting stuff. And, and largely it does play out in the experiences of the chart holders who have the same rising sign. But that's how you think of it. So any, any planet that's going to be in your first house in your chart is going to have effect on your sense of self and the nature of your personality. Remember that the planets are energies and the sign of the planet as reflected in your birth chart is how you personally express the energy of that planet. And I have a video on this channel of the basics of reading a birth chart. If you're interested in that, I'll put the link below. Now, obviously when you have a chart holder with the sun, moon and rising sign in the same sign, in this case, in the, in the sign of Scorpio, you have a concentrated, unfiltered direction of energy, okay? So the energy of the sun is obviously consistent with the energy of the moon and the rising sign. So your emotional life is consistent with how you approach life in general, how you pursue your goals, how, you know, that energy that illuminates the rest of your chart. It's all very consistent. And how you project yourself to the outside world, your personality, if you will, is also consistent with those energies. So you get this very concentrated version of energy.
Now, of course, there are other things in the chart, other personal planets and whatnot, that affect the chart holder. Uh, the sign and uh, house that Mercury is in will affect how you learn and retain and process information. Your planet Venus, the sign and house position of Venus in your chart, affects how you show up in one-to-one -one relationships, how you deal with the give and take in one-to-one -one relationships, things like that. Your Mars sign and house placement will inform how you pursue your goals, both personally and in relationships and things like that. So there are other elements in the chart that have an effect on all this. But since these three elements we're talking about are the ones that have the greatest effect on the chart holder's experience, this is obviously a significant thing when they are all in the sign of Scorpio because of this concentrated energy. Now, in the case of Scorpio, if these three elements are in the sign of Scorpio, the chart holder will be very intense, emotionally intense, loyal, very private, very guarded. Anyone who has a moon in Scorpio is going to be very private and guarded about their emotional experiences. Okay. It is tough if you are the parent of a child with these placements, these triple Scorpio placements, it is tough to chip away at, you know, the energy and figure out what is going on with this child because they are guarded and private. Okay. So you have to work on forming and reinforcing this close attachment and relationship so the child will feel comfortable speaking with you. They need to be able to feel comfortable approaching you. And remember that the reason Scorpio is so private and guarded is because they fear being emotionally hurt. The kind of the dichotomy, one of the dichotomies of this, this energy is that Scorpio craves emotional closeness with another individual and craves being vulnerable with that person, merging with that person, but fears the risks of intimacy, such as being emotionally hurt. So you have to create this space where the child, Scorpio child, feels comfortable opening up and is not attacked or made to feel bad or criticized for opening up about their emotional experience. So in a practical sense, how else does this energy show up when the child has triple Scorpio placements? Well, the parent may not be aware of this all the time because of the uh, guarded nature of the sign and because Scorpio is so self-protective and presents as reserved, right? Sometimes this is a sign where, especially with the Scorpio moon placement, often how the child presents is not consistent with what is going on internally. Okay. So the parent has to work hard to be attuned with this and to understand what is going on emotionally with the child, with the Scorpio child, so the parent knows what type of emotional support to provide to the child at that time. So the child may present as reserved, quiet, not very communicative, but that does not mean they are not going through some inner emotional turmoil or some emotional intensity that they may need help with. So it's tough to navigate and get to the bottom of that for the parent, but it is necessary. And there are things you can do to create that closeness and create that space so the Scorpio child feels comfortable opening up to the parent. Now, sometimes Scorpio kids can have uh, intense emotional outbursts that sometimes come from, uh, seem to come from nowhere because the child has been, appeared to be even keeled for a while and all of a sudden they have these outbursts. That just means that it's likely that they've been going through something and just haven't expressed it. And for some reason they're choosing to express it in that moment or are having a hard time keeping it in and remaining guarded and they have to express it. So those, those emotional, intense emotional outbursts are pretty common with Scorpio kids, especially on the, the, for the younger kids. So something for parents to be aware of and how you deal with the emotional outburst is key. Don't make them feel bad for being emotional like that. Don't criticize them, Co provide comfort, ask them what's going on. What do you want to talk about? What can I do for you? What, try to figure out what is going on. Now I see a lot of parents too, with this dynamic with Scorpio children. Uh, cause Scorpio tends to wallow in negative emotions. It's almost like they enjoy being negative and I'm not sure that they enjoy being negative, but they need to feel and feeling the negative emotion is preferable to feeling nothing. So in that moment, if they're feeling negative, well, they're going to dwell in the negative because that's the emotion that they're having at the time. So, uh, it is, um, a fairly common occurrence for the Scorpio child to express the negativity, appear to be negative about things and kind of wallow in it. It's also the fixed water nature of this energy. 
So I see this dynamic a lot play out with where parents kind of get upset or annoyed when the child is being so negative or the child is in a bad mood, okay? They don't like it. They don't allow the child to be in a bad mood. And I frankly, I don't think that's a good way of handling it, okay? Children get to be in bad moods. They are, have the freedom to be in bad moods, just like adults have the freedom to be in bad moods, okay? It's not, it's not a service to the child if you're forcing them to not to be in a bad mood. If you're telling them you should not be in a bad mood, you need to be happy. You need to teach and show kids how to come out of the bad moods on their own. You have to teach and show kids how to self-regulate their emotions. And one of the best ways to do that is kids see the parents self-regulating, right? This is called co-regulation. When the parents are able to self-regulate, the child is able to self-regulate, okay? So it is imperative that you regulate your emotions of irritability, you the parent of irritability, of anger, of annoyance with the kids, with their Scorpio kids, when they're in a bad mood, okay? One of the best ways to handle this is to ask your Scorpio child if there's anything you can do for them, provide comfort. If they're older, would you like comfort or solutions? Is there anything I can help you with? And um, if they're old enough to, and if it's appropriate, you can leave them. You can go to another room and kind of just create space. And if you can't leave them or you're in public, well, you can try to redirect them. That's another good strategy. Redirect them to do some other activity. Or, well, let's take a walk over here. Or, look, I'm sorry you're upset. I'm sorry you're sad. Let's take a walk over here and see what we can see. The great One of the great things about younger kids is they are usually pretty easily redirectable. If you have a kid with a lot of air in their chart, like Gemini, they are extremely redirectable. So that's a good thing because if they're in a bad mood, it's easy to kind of redirect them to something else and they're, hopefully their mood improves, right? But my point here is that uh, teaching your, your kid, your Scorpio kid to self-regulate is about you, the parent, learning to self-regulate around your child, even when your child has negative emotions. The key is always for the parent to remain calm. And remember, you are teaching your Scorpio child how to come out of their bad moods on their own. It's a great skill. They don't need to depend on others for their moods. They can kind of choose the mood they have when they're older, obviously. They can learn to self-regulate. If they're sad about something, they can learn to do something to make, them, make themselves feel a little better. These are very important lessons for kids. It's ultimately about processing emotions in a healthy way. And as most of us know, unprocessed emotions can often lead to health problems, including physical health problems. I'm finishing up the book, reading the book called The Myth of Normal by Gabor Mate. And it is all about that. Um, the Body Keeps the Score is another great book all about that. How these unpro unprocessed emotions, unprocessed trauma frequently leads to health problems, including physical problems. Uh, not just things like cancer, but also things like diseases of the nervous system and autoimmune diseases and things like this. So essentially, we are teaching our kids to self-regulate emotions, process emotions, deal with them in a healthy way, not suppress them, not repress them, but also not react to every single emotion we have. And obviously kids learn to do that, to self-regulate you know, more and more and better and better as they get older. A toddler does not have these, you know, the same self-regulating skills as an adolescent or a teen, right? And with when kids start to become, you know, 12, 13, obviously there's a lot going on there with their hormones and chemicals and stuff that causes them to have, to be, exhibit a lot of emotional intensity, right? But that's normal for childhood development. So you're teaching your kids how to self-regulate and as they get older, they will be more able to do that, especially when they see the self-regulating skills of the parent. And remember, I would be remiss if I did not bring this up again when talking about Scorpio kids. Another great way to help Scorpio kids deal with their emotions in a healthy way is by teaching them healthy empathy. And that means the parent, you the parent, showing empathy for the child, right? That's the model that shows them how to exhibit and have healthy empathy. You put yourselves in the shoes of the child empathize with the child, validate their emotions. You want to make sure you are conveying to your triple Scorpio child that whatever they are feeling, it is okay. It is okay to have the emotions they are feeling, even if they are negative, that there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with expressing and having this emotional intensity of the sign. 
That is what Scorpio is all about. We need those people to balance other energies, right? The emotional intensity, this need and drive to feel everything, to experience feelings at their maximum level, that is okay. It is how you deal with the feelings that, that matters. And a couple more things, you can um, create this space for your Scorpio child by spending lots of one-on-one -on -one time with them, pressure-free time where you're not pressuring them or asking them to share anything with you, where you're just having fun and also be emotionally available to them. When they want to talk, be available. Make eye contact. Scorpio kids love eye contact. If you have a Scorpio kid, you know that they often give you this intense gaze, right? That means they're concentrating on you. When you so they love getting eye contact from the parent because that tells them you are listening, that they have your attention, right? Make eye contact, ask questions, make comments, things like that. So they know you are paying attention to them, right? That is important that you be available for them when they want to talk and be emotionally available, not distracted with a bunch of other things, okay? And all in all, make sure they know you love them unconditionally. There is nothing they could do or say that, that you, that to make you love them any less. And I talk in detail in my videos on Scorpio kids about the sting of the scorpion. And sometimes when the Scorpio child feels like they're about to be hurt by the parent, they'll lash out verbally at the parent. And it's hard for us as parents not to take that personally, but ultimately that is a self-protective mechanism by the Scorpio child. It is not about you, the parent. It is about the Scorpio child feeling hurt or feeling like they're about to be hurt, so they're gonna lash out. That's why the, the responsibility for this relationship always rests with the parents. So you wanna make sure you are conveying to your Scorpio child, your triple Scorpio child, that you love them no matter what, no matter what they say, right? Even if they sting you. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have made a request for a particular video, I am getting to it. Uh, you can look uh, look forward to that very soon. If you have further requests for future videos, please leave a comment below and I will get to it. Thank you very much.